I think neoliberalism has won temporarily. Uh, and a lot depends on what people do about this. But unless they recognize that the ideas of neoliberalism are everywhere, particularly in Europe, but everywhere, uh, we are going to have a very hard time reversing this situation. The neoliberal doctrine has no regard for people. And there is a huge offensive going on right now against democracy, against social protection, against all of the gains that working people have made over the past century, at least. And this is going so fast that most people don't understand what is happening and they just feel that they've been slapped. The, the situation in Spain is perhaps better than elsewhere because people are reacting here. Now there's no counterpart, there's no communist center that's done for. And the crisis, the present crisis, is a huge opportunity to take revenge, to get back at all of those working people who got so much and the rich were prevented from becoming richer and not now, not now. So I think that what Warren Buffett says, Warren Buffett is the third richest person in the world. And I think he's probably a very nice man, and he's as a human being. And he says, there's class warfare going on, all right, but it's my class, the rich class, that's waging this war, and we're winning. We're winning. And then he goes on to say, after that, and this is not a good idea, and so on. But uh, yes, they're winning. And they are winning because they've got into people's heads because you think or your friends think uh, that you've been living beyond your means and now you have to pay and it's our fault and um, that austerity is the only way and so on. But, but this is, uh, well I could go on for hours about how this ideology was built up because it's been happening for the last 50 years. But there is class warfare, yes, and, and, and the rich are winning and that is the big um, this is the big obstacle that we have in our way. We have to get a different set of principles into our heads, which I have because I'm twice as old as you are, you see, at least. But, uh, but, but uh, you have not lived in this, uh, in this category of, of uh, other ideas. And the neoliberal ideas are up against um, the Enlightenment, which is a tradition of 200 and some years. The Davos class is my name for the interchangeable people who meet every January in the Swiss ski resort of Davos. Uh, and they are mostly bankers and businessmen. There are some government officials, there's one or two syndicalistas, there are a few NGO people maybe, but mostly it's bankers, industrialists, and people who generally agree with them. And they go to Davos to find out, okay, what is the, what's the, what's the truth this year? Uh, and, and to meet others, because they, there are a lot of deals that are done there. Um, and this is what I was um, trying to explain before, that there, there is no south and there's no north now because there is an elite everywhere and the elites of the south, the Brazilians for instance, are on an equal basis with uh, the Americans. Uh, and if you're not in the Davos class and you are part of the elite of your own country, you want to belong to the Davos class. So, um, but, but there, I don't think we can 
use the expression the third world anymore. There are so many lies being repeated every day that it's very hard to keep up with the lies. Uh, one of the major ones is uh, you have been living beyond your means. Uh, and this is repeated. You know that before the crisis, Spain had a debt of 40% of GDP. The magic number, the European number, is 60%. The Germans, the virtuous Germans, had a debt before the crisis of 68%. Now the Spanish debt is at about 69%, maybe 70 But this is not dangerous. And a family debt and a government debt are not the same thing at all. And what has happened in Spain is that the public sector has taken on all of the debt of the private sector that was selling mostly the housing bubble, which you all know about. And that it's the debt of that sector that is weighing now on all Spaniards. But that does not mean that the state has been uh, spending too much on health, on education, on culture, on luxuries, if you like. Uh, that, it, it, that has not happened. What the reason that the debt has gone up is because the state took on so much debt that was not its own debt, was the private sector debt, and the GDP had to compensate for that. Your, your, your national income had to compensate for the crisis, and also people were uh, suddenly unemployed huge numbers of people and they had to be supported but they weren't paying taxes because they weren't employed so you have a lack of income for the state which is not taxing the richest people you have a, a sudden uh, expenditure which ha cannot be avoided and the result of that is that you borrow and this has happened all over Europe If working means uh, taking care of people, providing employment, having investment, uh, having uh, small and medium-sized companies that, that are healthy, uh, these policies do not work. They contract the economy and they create unemployment. And even the International Monetary Fund is saying that now. They said all the cuts. Um, this may be a little technical, I'm sorry, but the, they, the cuts, every time you cut or every time you um, practice austerity measures, what the fund, what the IMF was saying before is this, if, if you cut by one euro, this will cost 50 centimes. Now they're saying, ah, we got it wrong. <laughs> This is going, if we cut by one euro, it's going to cost 1.7 euros. So naturally, that means that every time you cut the budget, it's costing you almost double what, uh, what, what you cut. So the economy is going to contract. So businesses are going to fail. So people will have less and less employment, etc. It's, but, but they know that, you see. They know these policies don't work. It's the only way out if you refuse to tax the rich, if you accept the European principles of uh, they will look at your budget and you cannot uh, sign your budget until uh, the European Commission has looked at it, your own Cortes, your own Parliament has no right to look at the budget first, uh, it, it is the only policy if you accept the, um, the precepts, if you accept the presuppositions uh, of neoliberalism. But if you don't, and if you say we must 
uh, change the tax structure. Uh, we have to be more uh, autonomous in, in uh, as much as we can in food, in energy, in uh, all of these things that are the basics of life. Uh, but if you accept what, what Europe is telling us, then it's up to you to pay, yes. But I don't believe that, you see. I would say to the European Commission, I would get together with other countries and I would say no to these policies because we know that they can't work. The best answer to that is how can we help people to believe something that's different from the ideological approach of the, of the neoliberals. The best way is to do it the way they did it. The way they did it was to uh, fund ideas to invest in the production and dissemination of ideas. They recognize that ideas have consequences and that they are important and the progressives have never recognized this. And I think that's because we think, well, our ideas are much better than theirs. Uh, we believe in social justice, in uh, greater equality, in uh, the whole set of ideas that came out of the Enlightenment in the 17th and 18th centuries, and a lack of, a, of at least a few common principles that everybody can agree on. Climate change, total reform of the financial sector, uh, a green transition, I think that's so, so simple that everybody could agree. Look, this is what I'm worried about and this is what you're worried about. And here we've got two arcs of the circle. This we can agree on, right? We don't have to do that this week. We don't have to do this and we don't have to do that this week. But we have to do this this week. We have to do that part of it. So let's get organized and do it.